o'clock. Don't you think you could have cleaned up, washed a dish or something? Please, it's the beginning of the day. Don't start. Start what? Calling you out on your laziness. Don't do that. I'm not lazy. Oh, yeah. Well, what do you call your behavior these past few weeks? Please, since when do you want to talk about something that's bothering me? Don't act like we're some type of dysfunctional family. Come on, Lynn, we are. I mean, I never said we were perfect. You never admit our flaws either. Why air family business? Family business. This is not some sort of corporate cover-up, Mother, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, drop it, Ashley. I wonder why I never tell you anything. If I could go ahead and have your attention, please. We're going to go ahead and get started. Hello, and welcome to our first time attendees. This is a safe place for you to share your stories, connect with others, and hopefully begin to or continue to heal. My name is Vince, and I'm one of the counselors. For those of you who are new, I first came to the center sitting right where you are now. Starting at the age of six, I was sexually abused by my mother's boyfriend. The rapes continued up until about the age of 15. That's when he and my mother ended the relationship. And here I was, left behind with this hard secret for me to carry alone. It wasn't until I came to the center that I was able to heal, finally tell my mother forgive him, and get through. A difficult time in my life, I came here for help. I've been coming for about a year and a half now, and it helps. For years, I was sexually abused by my father, and for years, I blamed myself for staying quiet. My silence was slowly killing me. The irony of it. I was dying a slow death by my own hands. I needed to stop blaming myself in order to heal. Coming here has helped me do that. Not totally, but I'm getting- To a place of coping and forgiveness? Fuck that. I have done nothing but question who I was, question my manhood, who I should be. And no one ever talked about it because it doesn't happen to men. Or better yet, they knew but pretended not to see it. No one paid attention. I was just a little boy. A boy. Who gets a rise out of touching little kids? Sick motherfucking bastards? People don't realize you could screw a kid's life up. I'm still dealing with it. Shit, I'm always gonna be dealing with it. Trying to be a man to my wife and kids? How this affects them? I can never imagine letting something like that. That happens every time I get here. I get touched. I think I want to say something, but I never seem to be able to find the courage. I've been coming here for a couple of months now, would sit back and just listen to you all share and think, can't do that. But tonight I want to believe I have a little more courage than I think. I was at a party in there. Wait, then makes you gotta know. What's that? Getting money's my only principle. What's that? There's no time for the fake and all the hate. No, I don't be faking, but you know I be taking the best. For my grizzly dad, you know I get busy. For my grizzly dad, you know I get busy. For my grizzly dad, you know I get busy. For my grizzly dad, you know I get busy. It's okay. I said no over and over again. But he told me that I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. When he was done, he said thanks and left. And now here I am, eight months later, still haunted by it. 
feeling trapped behind the story of what happened and what I want it to be. I want the images to stop playing in my head. I want them to go away. Tell me, does it really ever get better? It happened so long ago. It took me a long time to get to the place where I didn't think about it every day. You can go as fast or as slow as you need to. Where do you want to start? Well, my childhood. Um, I was five years old and my parents, they used to take in foster kids. It was me, my older brother, my younger sister, and three foster siblings, a house full. Um, you can say my parents have a heart for kids, I guess. You guess? Yeah. One, one of the children, something was a little off about him. Even at five, I could tell something was wrong. It's like you get this feeling, but well, this sense, but you, you can't explain the feelings associated with it. Yeah, I, I think everyone feels that at some point. It's like a, a sixth sense. Yeah, like that. When I was around him, it was like those feelings were raging. David, that was his name. He was 12 years old, and I ignored those feelings because I liked having kids to play with. You know, when you're young, you're trained to think that things are normal that it's love. Never talked to your parents about it? <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. Since then? No, I, I tried when I was younger and I just couldn't. And they never brought it up. And I guess it was easier left unsaid. I guess as a parent you don't want to believe your child's being hurt. <laughs> yeah, but the evidence was there. I started doing drugs and I became promiscuous and reckless with my life and I don't know, I just, I stopped loving me and I needed to be numb and for brief moments, I was. We all deal with issues in our life differently. You know, my parents got fed up with me and they kicked me out. They, they couldn't deal with me anymore. Where did you go? I managed. Tell him at my husband. He's been taking care of me ever since. Can only imagine it wasn't easy to start a relationship after that. I mean, I, I put him through the ringer. I really did. Um, he tried to love me. I pushed him away. We have a special bond. Not everyone gets that. Well, I wish they did. You see, he loved me through my journey. You know, he made me want to love him and my kids more to do better for them and for myself. They've taken me to a place that has made me want to heal.
Pastor Robbins. Thank you for agreeing to speak with me, Pastor Tolson. Not a problem. Your project is a worthy cause. Thank you. Um, I've been talking to a lot of people about their experiences with sexual abuse and their ability to cope with such a tragic event in their lives. And in conducting my interviews, I've found that a number of people are members of your congregation. I'm aware of the members of my congregation who dealt with sexual abuse, and I hate to even think of the unnecessary pain they've endured. Let me ask you this. What do you do when a member of your congregation approaches you about this issue? Through prayer and encouragement, we guide them to God, and ultimately God heals their pain. But what if that isn't enough? I, I mean, you have s such an opportunity to be part of the healing that you talk about, to bring your entire congregation together and create a community of hope and, and a refuge for those in need. Well, the issues of sexual abuse are very sensitive and it should be handled with such delicacy. I mean, I myself don't believe that having an open forum would give them a sense of anonymity where they would feel comfortable enough to open up and share. I agree that it's a delicate issue and should be handled as such, but I also don't think that we should brush it aside, especially when there is such an evident need. No one's brushing it aside. Do you offer one-on-one -on -one counseling? If requested, yes. And have they? One member has. Only one. We can't force anyone to come, Mr. Robbins. I just want to explore every possibility why someone wouldn't, you know, solicit help from your ministry. Perhaps it's because they're afraid of judgment or misunderstanding. Just because they aren't coming to us directly doesn't mean they've turned away from church or from God. But they, they need you. Mr. Robbins. We try to provide as much as we possibly can for the members of our congregation, but we're also limited with our resources. What I'm saying is that you can be a conduit for that healing that you speak of. <laughs> I mean, what happens when everyone thinks like that and does nothing? That, that you can't meet the need? What happens to all the people that fall through the cracks? You've been moping around this house for the past few months like you have the world on your shoulders. What's wrong with you? You wouldn't understand because you don't care to understand. Okay, well, try me. All those years you turned a blind eye and a deaf ear, you knew what was going on and you didn't do anything. See, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't blame me for stupid. You know what I'm talking about. You don't understand. You know what I've gone through. What does that have to do with me? My life hasn't been so different than yours. So I know more than you think. Are you kidding me? So that should, that should have been more of a reason for you to try and protect me rather than pretend that you didn't know what was going on. Protect you? How was I supposed to protect you? I didn't know how. It should be an eight. Oh. Wait, so you're pregnant? Yeah, a couple of months. A couple of months? So that's why you've been moping around here, dressed like that. Why didn't you tell me? Seriously? Because I needed to digest this myself. Because I didn't want to say this out loud because I didn't want this to be real. You didn't want it to be real? No, and I didn't say anything because of the way things happened. What do you mean the way things happened? Well, I don't want to know the truth. Ashley. Or Sean. Wait, 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 wait. Diane, Sean. They're like family. Ashley, that's like your cousin. I think I slept with him. You said the baby was It here. wasn't my choice. He forced oh, me. Oh, Ashley. No, he didn't. No, Stop it. No, Just you wanted up. to hear this. Stop talking. You wanted to hear this, right? You wanted to hear it. So he came on to me. So I ran to the kitchen. He followed me in there. And I was like, he kept going, he kept pursuing. And I ran up the stairs to go to my room. But before I got there, he grabbed me and threw me on the stairs. He just kept 
going and I tried so hard to fight him off. And when he was done, he just got up and said I wasn't that bad and left me there. No. No. You're lying. You've been out of control for the past few months now. You seriously not listening to me? Are you seriously blaming me for this? You should know better than that. He raped me. No. You did something you regret. And now that you got to live with the consequences, you're trying to avoid responsibility. This isn't something that you can pretend didn't happen and it'll just go away. There is a child. It is growing inside of me and it is a constant reminder of that night. I knew you wouldn't understand. You're right, Ashley. I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand how you can be so reckless. Ashley, how you can be so destructive with your life. You're my mother. You're supposed to believe me and be there for me and support me, remember? Why would I make this up? You made it up because your ass don't have no other options. That's why. Damn you, girl. gonna speak? I figured you start talking when you wanted to. You called me. How's the project going? Oh, you're interested now. I never said that I wasn't interested. I just didn't want to talk about me and you wouldn't let it drop. Then to say that I didn't know how to be a friend. You're just so guarded with me all the time. Well, I'm protecting me. And you never really answered my question. What question? Why are you doing this? Because I know these stories. What does that mean? The reason I've been pushing you so hard isn't just because I think it'd be good for you, but because I need this strength for me too. Stop being cryptic, Luke. The first time I met you, I got this feeling like I needed to protect you. And I didn't know what it was. But when you told me what happened to you, I, it clicked. But I still felt helpless, like I wasn't doing enough. This is my way of doing something. You can't protect everyone, Lucas. Why do you always do that? What? Just push people away. <laughs> I get that you're angry, but doesn't that get tiring after a while? I care, so stop trying to push me away. Just, why are you caring about something that's broken and can't be fixed? See, you are the only person that thinks that. I, I mean, you just need no, to- No, I don't need to do anything. Luke, you can't fix me or, or fix it or make it better or change it. So just leave it the hell alone. Ashley. Ashley. Ashley! You don't quit, Dan. Not that easily. Not with you. I don't want to talk about it. You don't get to do that again! What? Shut me out and yell at me, storm off, and not deal with this! I, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm 
Look at me. I can't. Look at me. No, I don't want to talk Look about this. Look at why. Because it's too hard and you keep trying to make me remember this and I don't want to remember it because it is too painful. I get that. Stop saying that. How, how, how can you possibly understand this when your dad starts coming into your room at night and putting his hand on your nightgown and saying, relax, baby, you want to make daddy happy? Well, this makes daddy happy. I was fucking six years old, Lucas. Then that bastard got pleasure out of touching his little girl. Yeah, you get that. Ash, more people. No, you don't. You can't. I thought I could get over it and be normal, but then my cousin rapes me. And to have somebody take something from you and make you part of that theft? Do you really get that? Yeah, I do. Fuck forgiveness. You just want to stop. There's a lot of people who knew what the fuck was going on and did nothing about it. As long as they didn't get hurt, it didn't matter that I did. I get that anger. I used to be that angry. Is that possible? He's my husband. But when he drinks too much or is angry, that ends up being my punishment. You can't escape something like that unless it happens. I choose not to be bitter and let this take control over me. For years, I was abused by the one person I thought should have protected me. And for years after that, I blamed myself. Angry at myself, angry at him, angry at everyone around me. I kept replaying moments over and over in my head, trying to figure out what I could have done differently. I was tired of hating my life and everyone in it. So I decided to do something different. I was a pretty happy kid myself. Not too many words. My mom was an honest, genuine person, the type to do whatever she could to give me whatever I needed. Around the age of six, she started dating this guy. And at first, he seemed pretty cool. Played sports, hung out together. He filled a void that I didn't even realize was missing. I let my guard down because he felt like a dad. Eventually, he started staying the night at the house. He'd come into my room at night, say he was just checking in on things. Then one night, he pulled back my sheets and said he needed to check under the covers. Then crawled underneath them with me. He began touching my neck, back, even rubbed my leg. It all made me feel so uncomfortable. I asked him to stop and that it made me feel funny. But he told me all I needed to do was relax. Despite how it made me feel, I still trusted him. Actually, being so young, I didn't realize what was happening. I know that every time he stayed the night at the house, he made a visit to my room. And each time, he built up how far he thought he could take things with me. After the situation stops, how do you start living day to day? How does the healing start? Does it ever stop? Or does the pain? Or the, the questions about who you are as a person and what you could have possibly done to make that situation not happen? This project has shown me the aftermath, the, the journey. I still don't know where I fit in all of it. I still need to figure out how to tell my story.